Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick Curtis, your host and chief monkey, and this is the Wall Street Oasis podcast. Join me as I talk to some of the community's most successful and inspirational members to gain valuable insight into different career paths and life in general. Let's get to it. Another interesting chat with the WSO interns. If you're interested in applying to the internship, please check out the show notes. There's a link right there. Enjoy. What we got here, we have a guest. I'm not sure who that is. Ant is here. Anja's here. Oliver's here. Tola's here. All right. We got uh, Neely. Uh, the Dio is here. How's everybody doing this week? Uh, people excited for the weekend? So if anybody, um, I think we'll just do this similar to how we typically do it. Um, we will see if anybody has any questions specifically around uh, the internship and then kind of move it to either resume reviews and or um, career advice. If I can give you any. So, um, yeah, welcome to the weekly intern chat, everybody. If you have, if for the people who haven't been here before, it's basically a very pretty informal way for us to kind of just see if I can help help you guys out, answer any questions. So we'll start it out. I think people will probably be straggling in. Um, this usually what happens for the first five minutes. There's a lot of people uh, kind of hitting the waiting room, but I'll, I'll try to let them in as they come. Um, to start off, any questions specifically around the internship itself? And I know some of you may be here, not actually started yet, but um, you're still welcome to be here, um, even if your start date is in the future. Is everyone back in school? What's what's going on there? But anybody have questions around that? I think Tola, you were here last week, right? Or no? Yes. Okay. Cool. So uh, there was somebody else that was on from last week that wanted a resume review. Does anybody want? Um, Anybody want me to review the resume on this call this week to help out? Or um, is there anybody, I mean, you can, we can anonymize it too. You can send it to me over the, the Slack chat. I'm happy to, um, I'm happy to kind of remove your name and stuff like that and just review it here. Can I email it to you? Yeah, you can email it or yeah, um, you can send it to Patrick at wallstreetoasis.com. Uh, hey, Dana. Yeah, the recording will be provided. Um, Tangil says you'd like to get his uh, resume reviewed. Okay, go ahead and send it to me. If you can send it the word version to me over Slack, that's the easiest way to go about it because then I can pull it up on my screen faster. Um, I'll get word open, get it ready. So, um, let me know once you send that to me, and I will current, I will open up. I know what we have is the the standard template. I'll show you guys what that is for the Wall Street Oasis template. And then what I like to do is open up um, the other resume and kind of compare it. Um, yeah, my email is, I'll send it to everybody here. Uh, Patrick, or you could just send it here, but it's probably easier if you send it over the, um, over the chat or over Slack so I can just open it up. I have to dig out my email, but I can I can grab it from my email if that's easier. If you can send the Word version, that would be best, because then I can kind of edit it as we go. Yeah, while we're waiting for that, Anja, why don't you go ahead? You have a career question. Go ahead. Uh, you want to unmute yourself? Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. I have two questions actually. Sure. Uh, sure. the first one is on the CV section, the interest section. Yes. Uh, in the CV. Um, to what extent do we have to be good at those interests? Because I remember you said that they're going to grill us and I'm so scared <laughs> because I'm, my hobbies aren't like, I don't do them professionally. So for uh, example, I wrote running. Yeah. So I don't think it's that important that you um, are like, an Olympic athlete or the best in something that's an interest. But I do think it's important that you don't just list a bunch of generic interests mm -hmm. that are kind of like you do. Do you know what I mean? Um, okay, yeah. I think it's more interesting if you're specific about certain things. Um, okay. 
You know what I mean? So like, rather than running, is it like 10 K trail running? Is it, you know what I mean? Um, okay. Something that's going to be a little bit more unique, like our, our road races are, you know, you know, having something like, you know, you like competing in, I don't know, you know, like ultra marathons, like obviously insane, but like, you know what I mean? Like completed a marathon or did something, you know, that showed you're actually, you were a runner. It's not like you have to put your times on there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like just showing something like that you're, you know, you are passionate about it. Um, or, you know, it might be better just to put something else or to have two or three, you know, instead of five or six interests, put two or three that you really are uh -huh. really to talk about. I I put uh painting and reading. Also. So what type of what type of painting? Uh portraits. So you should put that. Painting portraits, okay. uh, acrylic, oil, what? Mm-hmm uh acrylic and watercolor okay so i think that would be better than having running having more specific <laughs> around painting okay uh and what about the reading <laughs> One. reading what do you mean uh like if you like books oh okay what type of books do you like fantasy but it, would that be relevant like would they ask me about that yeah they may say well, what do you mean fantasy is there a different way to say fantasy? Do you mean like sci-fi? Yeah. Or like, you know, Tolkien type books? Uh, well, sci-fi fantasy is kind of like a genre within itself, but when there's like a different world. Yeah. So but I mean, I read every genre, basically. I read like crime thriller and other stuff too. Mostly nonfiction. I mean, you see, it seems like fiction and nonfiction. So you're kind of doing both. But is there one that you really enjoy the most? That you'd be able to fiction, definitely yeah so like what yeah what would you be able to have the best conversation around if somebody was like oh i love that too would you be able to talk about several books in that genre definitely so that's i think put that like little detail in there rather than it being um generic like fiction reading yeah fiction sci-fi novels you could say sci-fi okay. fiction novels like could be your interest and people be like, what do you mm -hmm. mean? What books? You better have at least two <laughs> and know them well. No, I do, I do. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I have another question. Sure. Um, I That's actually like a great interest too, because some people won't care. Like I would be like, okay, whatever. I'd be like, oh, but it, okay. it might, it might pique my interest. I'd be like, well, tell me about that book. Well, what did you like about it? Be like, you can just say, I love like the imaginary worlds and it's very mm -hmm. great. Um, blah, blah, blah. I think mm. fine. Um, it just shows some personality outside of like, I only want to be a robot in finance. <laughs> uh, yes. And my second question yeah. uh, was, I want to do a master's. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was thinking of doing a master's in Germany. But I don't really feel like paying 60,000 euros <laughs> per year. So my question is, does it really matter if you go to like an expensive and like a very good university or could you just get a master's at like an okay university? Um, it's a good question. Um, cost is definitely a very legitimate concern. Um, and so I think you have to add like to answer that question there's first off there's no like yes or no it's a good decision bad decision it really is very specific to your situation. So let me give you an example of when it would be a good decision. And let me give you an example mm -hmm. of when it might be a kind of a poor financial decision. So when you think of masters or MBAs or any of these, these types of programs, typically they're best for people who know they want to get into XYZ industry. So let's use investment banking. Let's say they were at big four accounting and then they are at like a small boutique bank and now they want to go to like a larger bulge bracket, but they've been having issues. Um, getting promoted, whatever, whatever it is, the MBA or a master's might be a great way to get another shot at like on-campus recruiting and get into the, that associate level role at a top bank. Mm -hmm. um, so for, in that case, the, you know, 60,000 euros or hundred thousand euros, especially could quickly pay off, especially if you were in a role, let's say where you were making um, 50,000 euros. And then after the, after you graduate, you're making 120,000 euros. So it's like a 70,000 euro bump year after year after okay. year, not more, and then mm -hmm. you're on a faster trajectory. So in that case, it pays off pretty fast. That being said, like if you're already in a role that pays well, there's a much higher opportunity cost to going to school. 
um, there's a much, so like, it depends if you have low pay and like, it's very hard and like, you're in actually a less related thing and it's very hard to get a pivot into that or to mm -hmm. show people that you're serious about it. That's when the master's is actually the most valuable to you. If you can get into a good program, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. In those cases. So it's almost like ironic The people who get in the easiest need it the least, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so the other the other thing the other thing really important to look at is not just like is it good for you based on like the potential career earnings, but is it in the potential networking opportunities and building out that stronger network? But also, what about that specific school? Um, how are they doing with people like from your profile? How are those people placing mm -hmm. post graduation? So like before you invest sixty thousand euros, I'd I'd hope you'd want to do a lot of research around like, okay, well, who had this master's? What did they have? What was the jobs they had before? And what did they have after? Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that's going to be you, right? Um, and so that could potentially be you. And so you don't want to be shelling out big dollars without knowing what your investment's going to potentially most likely yield you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So like if you're talking, it's very different if you're talking like in the US, I'll talk to the US because I know it. If you're talking like a Wharton, um, you know, a Stanford and HBS, it, that's very different from if you're talking like um, something way down, like a like a Michigan State or something, I'll just say, like MBA or something like that. You know what I mean? Just like a, a it's just not the same. You're not going to get as many opportunities at the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the ladder. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not still a good move for a lot of people that like, you know, maybe they're they're working for a company that's like, hey, we want you to get your MBA before we promote you to like senior VP in corporate. And so for that, it still makes sense for them. But it, yeah, so I guess it depends on the school. I don't know the German master's market that well. Um, but, you know, I would I'd want to talk to people who've graduated from that program and, get, and okay. talk to the career center, but just have, take anything they give you with a grain of salt because they're going to put it in the best possible light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they may give you like kind of broader metrics like, oh, we, you know, 95% of our graduates have a job within 90 days after graduation. I'm like, okay, that mm -hmm. doesn't tell you that much. Mm -hmm. The job they wanted is it a pay raise. Is it a, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot okay. of these companies, a lot of these, uh, I just call them companies, but they are kind of companies, schools, companies are actually <laughs> tracking a lot of this stuff now. So you may be surprised what you can get. Okay, I'll, I'll research that. Thank you. Yeah, but yeah, but definitely think about it before going out. What's your target and where are you right now? Maybe I can give you a little bit more specific advice. Uh, I'm in Greece right now, but I was thinking of going to Germany because I wanted to uh, maybe live there and work there. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's a couple of considerations. Um, one is... I don't know what the work visa, like, are you just, since it's you, like, you're basically can just go in and it's fine. There's no work visa issues. Uh, I'm not EU because I'm from Serbia. You're from Serbia. Okay. So like, yeah, that's so something I, you want to look into, to. like, yeah. you know, what's the placement for kids that are not EU that can get, can, are they able mm -hmm. to get a job um, in Germany? Okay. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you may say, yeah, 95%. Oh, but guess what? 80% of the people that, that weren't in part of the EU ended up having to go move back home. Uh-huh. And that that 60,000 euros can be very painful. At that mm -hmm. point, if you're not able to get a you know a, a high, relatively higher paying job in the in the country that you went to, to study in. Mm -hmm. So beware, okay. buyer beware. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I got Tola. I got your resume. I have it here. Um, I don't see somebody else said they sent a resume. It's me. I sent you my resume, Nelly. Did you? Yeah, I think a bunch of people did. Um, did you send it to me over email? Gmail. Yeah, Gmail. Okay, let me see if I can pull it up. Did you also get my resume? I sent. You the word dots on Slack. Yeah, I got yours. Let me download this and open it. I will start here. Don't worry. We'll get to at least a couple today. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, I guess I could introduce myself. Um, yeah, my name is Tenjo. I'm currently a senior at Baruch College. I guess one of my mission right now 
is to get like a full-time opportunity. And I just have some general question in terms of like networking. Yeah. Um, sure. When you're on, when you're on like the phone call with like, let's say campus recruiters or recruiters or professionals in general, right? How, how can you tell if you made like a really good impression and like, you know, how can you make sure that connection stays strong? It's a really good question. Um, so how can you tell takes time and practice to really know, like picking up, it's harder on the phone because you can't see facial expressions and body language, um, but you can kind of tell based on pauses, based on excitement, stuff like that in terms of how they're responding to what you're saying. Um, but it's almost like you should care about that, but you know, at the end of the day, if after you've said something, whether you did a good job or you didn't, it's done, it's over. So you should almost just be looking to like, just continually improve and not try to judge yourself. If that makes sense, uh, based on like your performance, because it's almost like you're putting so much pressure on yourself to like figure out if they liked you or not. Um, I think what's more important is that you just show a passion for the, for the industry, you show a passion for like the roles that they're, that they're trying to fill. Um, and usually that'll come across pretty well. Uh, let's take a quick dive into your resume. So tell me what the situation is right now. So you're graduating in nine months, 20, 2023. Yeah. June, 2023. And you've had a couple internships. It looks like. Yeah. I try to keep my, um, resume a little bit general and broad just because I just want to get into like a really good company. I know that um, after two years, I want to be like able to switch my roles and actually like, you know, like keep switching roles until like, you know, I could find a spot where I'm like satisfied with that role. And do you say that on these calls? I don't really say that on the call. Okay. I just tell them that, you know, like as a, as a junior associate, I want to be able to be flexible in terms of moving up the ladders. Yeah, so it's a little bit, you don't want to give off that impression that you're looking to jump frequently because that can be a, a red flag in terms of like, they call it a flight oh. risk. Oh, I okay. know. Yeah, so when they ask you why this industry, why this company, which are very common questions. And like, so like why, for example, let's say you're interviewing for like, um, I don't know, equity research position, why equity research? You want to be talking about like how you're analytical, how you love looking at companies and 10Ks and 10Qs. Then they're going to ask you like, okay, what companies have you analyzed? And you better be ready, right? They're going to ask you like, right. you're or like, you know, you like looking at valuation and understand like doing that sort of um, almost like uh, what's it called? Uh, detective work, right? Then there's like the investment banking used to be like, well, I'm looking to learn a lot um, and develop skills that I know will serve me for a long time throughout my career. And I know an analyst program is a great, great uh, way to do that, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'm looking at where do I see myself in five years? I see myself uh, hopefully getting promoted at the bank um, and, you know, moving up through us in the associate ranks. And that's going to be something they like to hear because they have a huge attrition problem. So what they don't want to hear is, well, I know it's a great launching path. Banking is a great has a lot of great exit opportunities. I can jump to private equity or other do other things after a couple of years. Um, because then that's like confirming their fears of like, oh, he's not really in it. He's not really passionate about this job. He just likes what he can give him, whether it's money or exit ops or any of this stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. I thought it was already given just because like it's just a junior role and they know that... Um, they know that but you want to show like a passion for that role specifically uh, and like the stories you give. So like, this is like the, the important part of the behavioral thing that a lot of people overlook. Everyone studies the technical questions because they want to make sure they get the valuation questions, right? They walk me through the DCF, um, you know, all this stuff. Um, when people don't realize how weak their behavioral questions are, walk me through your resume. Why investment banking? Why this company? You know, why, you know, why UBS, why JP Morgan, why Goldman Sachs, why the, they're going to have similarities, but you need, you should be very specific about them. You know, when you know you're going into an interview for a specific fund or bank or, or a firm, you should know about that firm. You should know what their like core mission is. You should see how it resonates with you. You should be able to like point those things out to show that you've done your homework before going in. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So like, 
Um, your resume overall, just quick impressions, uh, looks like it's formatted pretty nicely. Um, is there a reason you don't have your GPA on here? Is it low? Below three? Like a 3.2, but <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, yeah, I don't, yeah. Borderline. Um, so that's going to be your, that's gonna be tough. Cause you're, you know, non-target plus, um, the GPA is kind of borderline. So it's gonna be really hard, um, to get into like the top you know, the top most competitive roles. That being said, um, that's why I was thinking about um, just trying like consulting for like, maybe like one of those top four firms, just because consulting yeah, is kind of like just flexible. Has, McKinsey, Bain, BCG are, are just as competitive as banking roles, if not more. Oh. They're super hard to get into. You have to be an expert at case interviews. Oh, that, that takes a ton of preparation. Yeah. So that's not a backup for safety <laughs> by any means. Um, it should be a realistic goal for me then. Um, I think like a big four, like if you can show that, I mean, you don't have accounting so much, but you have a lot of like business and let's see, real estate. Um, I'm just looking through real quickly. I'm seeing Redwood Capital Management. So you're doing like trade-offs, trade settlement. That's like more middle office back office type work. Right. Um, so that might be something um, where they'd give, you, they'd give you a shot. American need to, Goldman Sachs, Insight Series participant. So like a lot of things here, I think overall, just looking at all your bullets, I barely even see one number throughout this entire resume. Oh, so there should be like numbers to like everywhere and everywhere and anywhere you can quantify, 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 quantify. I'll say it a thousand times. You're like, how am I supposed to quantify math tutor? How many people did you tutor? <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> how many monthly check-ins? How, what do you mean? Surpass learning goals. How many of them surpass learning goals? What was the outcome? What was the result of the work you did? not just your responsibilities. So sorry, I like get crazy on this stuff because I see the same errors over and over and over and over again. And I call them errors because this is the one document that gets you a chance, gives you a chance to get a, in, an interview. And you have very, very, very little room for any sort of weakness on your resume, given the no GPA on here and the non-target school. Now you have one huge thing going for you. You're in New York. Correct. You have that going for you, which is a huge advantage. Um, so <clears throat> what I'll say is if you can get your resume tightened up, showing a lot more quantification, like, oh, wait, I'm wrong. You had one number, raise AK. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, good, okay? But like, my point is like, get, oh, no, you just one of 150 students. Okay, so you did it a few times here, okay? But just get more. give me more of that, okay? All right. And I think that I'll, it'll make it better. Um, how about GMAT or, or any, uh, entrance exams that you took? Did you do any, do well on any of those? Oh, uh, I don't think so. Did you take any of those? Like GRE? I, I can't remember what the entrance exam is for like. GRE? Yeah. GRE or SAT or whatever. Uh, no, uh, my SAT wasn't the best. So <laughs> was it good? Okay. So yeah, so that's, that's the tough part is you can't like offset a low GPA with a high SAT. So like. It's really going to be a game of, so what happened here where you did three years at CUNY and then what you transferred? Oh, uh, yeah. I did two years at like City College and then transferred to Baruch College. Okay. And was your GPA higher at City? No, not really. It's just like 3.2 on both. Okay. And so they're going to maybe ask you like, what was the struggle? Why, why do you think you weren't able to get a higher grades in those classes? Yeah, I guess I could say like, I. Uh, like I'm a person that gets involved a lot. What did that mean? Like I like to keep myself busy by joining clubs and activities, and yeah, um, I just saw like more of a more of like a interest towards like like professional development instead of like academia development. Okay, but I'm not seeing a ton of that. I do see some courses here, but like. I don't know. I think this 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 uh, internship will help you open doors and potentially get more interviews. Which what? internship? The WSO internship. Oh yeah, yeah. So add that. Into... Yeah, definitely add that. 
maybe take okay. away. Yeah, which one should I take away? I mean, these in like Global Stacks, Virtual Insights, and American Easy Fellow and Ambassador, like these are kind of it's a lot of space. Founding father of that's kind of cool. Yeah. I would keep that because that's like you were in you launched it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's cool. That's cool. American Easy Search Education Elevation Knowledge Club Treasurer. So this is all good, but like you don't necessarily need to like have two bullets on each of these. You might want to just like billiards. What type of billiards? Just like pool. But with with the interest. But aren't there different really types of that. pool? Aren't there different types of pool? I think so. But philosophy. Yeah. What type of philosophy? Uh for philosophy. In general. I just like yeah, I just like to talk about things, I guess. Okay. Well you gotta have to know better better answers than that in your interview. You better get you better be ready to be specific. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, just quantify more. And then your your huge advantage. Um, and because your resume is not going to open a lot of doors for you. Um, even though it's it's formatted actually pretty well. But your huge advantage is going to be in New York. So it's getting to talk with people. Other other alums from, from CUNY or other public schools. Okay. And that means like setting up as many calls and as many coffee chats as you can in the city. Right. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's why like the question that arose in the beginning was Well, how do you feel? Have you been meeting out, people for coffee? Uh kind of just like on a phone call and like Zoom calls, but not really coffee chats. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great if you could start meeting them up. Yeah. Um, and develop more of a personal connection. I know it's intimidating, but it's important. You're gonna have to get used to it anyways. It's you're doing interviews face to face now, right? So And would you say that I should dress kind of like business casual with like yeah. shirt yeah. slash yeah yeah um, business casual or if they're in a suit they're probably very few people are in a suit um then you right. suit but um yeah i think business casual is usually a good bet all right that sounds good cool man keep uh keep going if you want us to check through it check it again um next week um let me let me know after you've made some edits yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Let's see. I got that one from Mode. Oh, also, could I ask you in Slack, like, what kind of bullet points should I add for WOS if I add that in? Yeah, WSO. Yeah, you can, on the top of the Slack group, there's an example, so exactly what to add. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Yep. No worries. Can you take yourself off mute if you're here? Uh, yes, sir. It's more mud. How are, how are you? Yes, sir. I'm fine. How are you? Good. So uh, tell me what's going on. Where are you in your career? Your, um... Yes, sir. Currently, I'm pursuing my graduation. You're pursuing I'm your the final year. I am, I am pursuing my graduation, sir. Okay. And where? At Delhi? Uh, in Delhi, yes, sir, India. So, um... I am not very well prepped in giving great advice for jobs in Delhi. So I don't want to give you bad advice. Um, my, the only thing I'll say um, is certain bullets like this experience using office. You're not quantifying anything to me. Um, I would use our template from the site to clean it up. So you have an educational section here that's much more clean instead of a grid. Because I can't tell if this is okay. Now I see this is 18, 20, 23. I think it'd be much more clear if you had that listed out. And you can use this template and then just copy from here into here un unformatted text. So you keep the grid. See this table? You're not going to see this table when it's printed or sent to PDF. But I would do that because it's going to, um, it's going to help. So like, for example, this talent acquisition recruiter role, you don't give me any numbers. And like, this is a one role where you can just give a ton of numbers. How many people are you reaching out to um, every day? What, to what tools are you using? You said experience office suite and G suite. That's super vague. So is it Word, PowerPoint? What, what tools are you, uh, you know, using LinkedIn? 
um, scheduled and connected group orientation for new hires biweekly. Um, how many hires? Resolve oh, issues open. as fast as possible. Okay. Contain update database relating to employee data base. That's a like a, I don't, this is weird. Update databases related to database. That's just like not good English and a typo. So this needs to be reread, printed out, reread about 10 more times. It needs to be in a better format and you need to quantify a lot more. Okay. Okay, sir, okay. Yeah, it's it's not it's not competitive. At least for I mean, I, I don't know there. I mean, I think your grades look very, very impressive. So that's good from what I can tell. Um Thank you, sir. Yeah, but I think coming out of school, I think you're gonna need more um than that to to show um to show that. So like I, I would start there and then come back and we'll we'll look at it again. Once you've quantified a lot more, look at the look at the template we have, look at the quality of the bullets here, and look at what we have for Wall Street Aces finance internship and what you could potentially write if you if you do it, and the strength of those bullets and the length of those bullets compared to what you have. Okay. Oh, oh, business. No, good, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's fine. No worries. I was um, gonna say, I was gonna say the design looks nice. I never seen a resume like that. That's nice of you. Um, I personally think the design is a little bit, un it's not unprofessional, but it's like, you kind of want it to be more clear, clean, like what Tanjil did or what this resume template is. You don't necessarily want gray, gray boxes and, um, a lot of like lines on your resume. You want to use white space. So there's like different problems. Some people try to fit everything in their life onto one page resume. And it's like tiny little font. And like, I've seen like no margins or like 0.2 margins and like they're trying to get everything in. To me, that means you don't know what's actually valued for the specific job and you don't know how to prioritize. So like you got to make sure you're leaving the proper spacing, the proper building and that you have it clean even without, you know, all that stuff. So let's look at uh, another one here. Iman, are you there? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Okay, this is another PDF, so it's harder. Oh, look, I just talked about fitting everything in with no margins. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first thing I want to say is you got to get some margins on here. Okay. And we got to decide where to cut. Okay? Yeah. There's um, a lot of recent experiences, so I don't know where to cut. Yeah, no, I understand. Let's talk, let's talk through it because it's not an easy decision, right? So first yeah. tell me you're 2024. Okay, great. Um, and you're at a very strong target school. Okay. So you have that going for you. Um, Pro Bono Consulting, Coopers. These are all pretty good. So one, one way to save yourself a tiny bit of space is move to this template that the name way up and to the left. And okay. get your get your stuff. That'll save you a tiny bit of space, not much. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about down here. Uh, here we go. Energy Consulting, Leadership, Director of Corporate Relations. Let me. How many events? Okay. Um. No, I recently got this position. So. Yeah. It's well, if it's. Uh, University of Toronto Consulting Association Director Don. Change mission twenty percent percent top rank consulting firms. That's great. Broadman Commerce, except Consulting Association. Are you tar are you targeting management consulting? Uh, management consulting and financial advice. Like, like I like IB, IB, yeah. corporate restructuring, like Deloitte and all that stuff. Yeah. So this this GPA is like again, it's going to be tough, right? Yeah. Um. Do you have other, is there any other metric in here that shows high intellect, like a uh, entrance score? No, I do have high SAT and TOEFLs, but I don't know if I was supposed to put that in. Yeah, I would but, put it in, especially okay. with the GPA like this. How high is it? 80th or 90th percentile, over 90th percentile? Yeah, so I did TOEFL, that was like 110, and then I did SAT. And, that and what is that percentile wise, TOEFL? 
110 on 120. So I don't know. Get the that. percentile and put that here. So put the total okay. score and put that, and um, it'll hopefully um, kind of offset the GPA a little bit. Yeah, I know for sure. Um, the good news is you have a lot of internships, a lot of you're involved a lot. Yeah. So let me let me read here. Consulting lead director of finance for our conscious innovation group. So yeah, so um it's all good. I mean, you're quantifying really well. I mean, but you're just your formatting's horrible. I, I know, but that's what I don't know where to cut out. Like you're I'm you're you have a lot that. of good stuff and a lot of great bullets here, but this is the exact example of like where you gotta have you have to make some tough decisions. So let me let me look at the bottom real quickly. Warren Finance, Quantitative Modeling, Bloomberg Market Act, Fact Set, WSOXL Modeling, PowerPoint Finance, Private Equity Deal Process, Financial Modeling, m a Modeling, PwC Academy, Divestitures. Man. This is great. Goldman Sachs. Maybe get rid of the te tele tele fundraiser for UOT. Yeah, no. Um, Rational Capital Investment Fund, Senior Analyst. Like, what is this? Uh, this is the investment fund at U of D where we invest our own $20,000. Okay. Got it, got it. Okay. Oh, this feels like a lot, these two. Are they the same club? One's an innovation group and one's just Rotten yeah. Commerce? No, so the one that's just Rotten Commerce is like consulting projects that Rotten Commerce takes on. And then on that, it's like student-led projects. So students lead the initiative and I led two of those projects. Yeah, so I think just get rid of this consulting lead and have it all just be under Rotman Commerce, like innovation group, and just have it be under one group. Okay. Okay. Um, let the 10 directors of the club to budget the finances needed to fund innovation to the pitch diverse events in the corporation to the sponsorship to 10. Oh, it's tough. I don't know which one to cut here. Um, usually it's very easy for me, but you have a lot of like, some are stronger bullets, some are stronger names. <laughs> this is like, this is strategy and growth. If you're going to be going for consulting, if you're going to be going for consulting, you keep this. If you're going for finance, I would remove the panache trading because you're, you're really, your main role is strategy and growth. Yeah. Like UX, UI design. No, but then you have comparable company analysis. Uh, get rid of this bullet. Presented the company's mm -hmm. reforms, products, and this year. It's irrelevant. Um, you get you need a smaller font, okay, for your okay. bullets. You have to have a margins. You can't. It's gonna um, get rid of the IBM pro bono. You just started until you have something to say there. Um, Capitalize intern here. It's not consistent with the rest. What's the, I think you need to get down to two bullets on these. Developed and finance target operation model framework and worked on design component of the mega city project in the Middle East. See here, notice on here, there's no quantification. In these bullets, I think your, I think your bullets here are much stronger, your panache are much stronger and the WSO ones are stronger just because it has the percentage increase and in how many articles you wrote on specific topics. So like, I would almost like want to at least remove one of these bullets too from PwC. Yeah, I've got it. Um, maybe the last one on SPVs, like that's way out of favor anyways. Yeah. And like people are laughing at SPVs now, so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so maybe get rid of that, keep this to one bullet. Keep your panache ones and then maybe remove one. I think that last one's pretty cool. I would get rid of this top one, analyze market share loss to Pepsi and the independent markets, because it sounds like that's like a very like for an in-market research intern, it's pretty serious thing. Do you know what I mean? No. Like I would just keep these two because it sounds okay. like part of a team and get rid of this top bullet. You've already, okay, so that saves you a lot of space right there. Um, but the leadership, let's see what we can get rid of here. Again, I would combine Rotmer Commerce, these into one, so you don't have to rename, rename it. Right. 
um, and then you get you get a whole other row there. And notice, like this font is smaller than this font. Yeah, just squeezing whatever I can. Yeah, yeah. So don't do that. Have it be consistent. Um, I think we have like a nine here, a ten. I wouldn't go below ten on anything. Okay. Okay. Um, if you if you're having trouble, like with technical skills, da da da, like you don't need to have port. Um, you don't need to have Microsoft Suite. It's going to be obvious. You already have Excel here. And you don't need to say Microsoft. Okay. Um, these interests are kind of cool. Um, it's actually they're not only interests, but like also like stuff that I've done, which I've done. Yeah, done. yeah, I know. Uh, GS, you should say GS, Virtual Insight Series. You can get rid of this tele fundraiser thing. Um, the rash, rational capital investment fund I would keep because it's relevant to pretty relevant. Um, what's G20 research group? What's that? So that's essentially, you know, the G20 summit that happens every year. So I was, it just feels like you're very, you're graduating in two years. You've done all this stuff. It just feels like you're touching on a lot of things and just getting yourself involved in everything. Yeah. Which is maybe why your GPA is suffering. Yeah, no. And also last semester, like. In just one semester, like uh, because of some issues, it went to two point four in that one semester. Otherwise, it was really fine. And then okay. that's why last this semester it did. Yeah, the only one semester was in What was your GPA before that semester? It was a three point five thing, so not that high, but it was decent. Yeah. Um, okay, get your other scores in there, like I mentioned. Yeah. Um. There's just competitions, there's this, there's that, there's this, it's, it's too much. People are going to see this resume and go like this, like, cause it's just too much to take in. Yeah. Um, and they're not going to know what a lot of these things are anyways. So it's better to like consolidate. Like this should be go, you should have like one, like Rotman commerce should be the only thing and let outreach it up. It should be for this for hundred students across Ontario. And then it should be like project one, project two under the same thing and get rid of these two. Yeah, I can do it. I can do 10, it. 10,000 is not that impressive. Ten direct you led the 10 directors. Okay, of course you did. Like there's gonna be like, okay, whatever. I think it's just better to say how you're involved and then talk about the specific projects projects you led is more that's better uh fodder for the interview for you. Got it. And this looks much more impressive. Six hundred thousand cat, right? Yeah. So um so redo that, get it in this type of format, okay. I mean, look, your your <laughs> your stuff's to the left of the <laughs> thing. It's like, yeah. yeah. If if you showed this to, and and then what about this thing, this QR code? Why are you putting that there? Oh, that leads to my LinkedIn. I thought it'd be pretty cool. So if they just want to see the LinkedIn on the phone, and yeah, like I wouldn't do it. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just more. It's just more stuff. Your your resume is already gonna be packed, even with the cuts we made. Okay. No, it sounds good. We'll definitely cool. look into that. Thank you so um, much. Let me see here. What else we got? Khadija, are you there? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Khadija. Um, I'm looking at your resume. I'm not going to share it here, but a um, couple things. I, I would try to, yeah, I try to get it to one page. Okay. You don't need this uh, this statement at the top. Use this here. I'll share my screen. Use again, just use our template here. Work experience. These bullets are all the formatting is just really needs a lot of help. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's like all this extra uh, space. It took me like three pages. Yeah, it should be one. Oh, well, do you want, do you think it's better to just uh, fit it in one page? Yes. Then like, okay. Cause yeah. I'm just new to it. Unless you're the only time I've ever seen, um, yeah, like prepare vendor payments based on the contract for the LPO. Like, um, so like as an accountant, a trainee, try to give me a little bit more in terms of like numbers and like how many you handled per day. Um, what the results were, did you help 
processes? Did you do this? Did you do that? Rather than just being generic responsibilities. Okay, sure. I'll do that. Thanks. And uh, yeah, definitely less bullets. Just just do the most impressive ones. Include the most impressive ones. It's not a the, a resume is not a list of things you did at your job. A resume is trying to sketch you an interview. It's trying to show. It's trying to shine a light on your experience and on your background. That's the most um, flattering, right? Possible. So think of a recruiter. Do they want to read a, a checklist of all the things you did at your job? Or they who are they trying to hire? They're trying to hire somebody who's going to be a hard worker, uh, you know, show that they make an impact and care about their job. So what you want to do is try to convey that in your resume, not convey everything, not show everything. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. And how about the uh, GPA? My GPA is 3.34. Keep it. So should I mention it or no? Yeah. Because it's not that yeah, hard. Yeah, no, keep it. Keep it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would keep it. Um, if you can supplement it with other high scores on other uh, standardized tests, other certifications, that's always good. And I wanted to ask about the courses that I have mentioned, the important courses. Uh, should I mention them, like how it is, or remove them? Uh, because... These training courses? Um, not the training courses at the top, the first page. Main, uh, main courses. Yeah, relevant, uh, relevant coursework. It's after you... education. Yeah, we have it up here. Relevant yeah, main courses. courses. Yeah. Okay. You can include it. Um, for sure. I mean, are you looking to get into audit? Yeah, yeah, accounting. Actually. Yeah, so I would, yeah, I would definitely, I think you could do it. You have a lot of, like, good coursework and all that stuff. Um, you just need to clean up your your resume for sure. Even little things like this, Khadija. Yeah. See this spacing right here? How it's inconsistent? Yeah. This is, this is to me, so like think of this page as like, this is the one page where everything has to be perfectly aligned, perfect spacing, mm -hmm. every word okay. matters, right? Yes. It is, it is the page you're using to sell yourself, to get it and start your career. So it literally has to be dialed in. You should be printing this out 10 times, 11 times, 12 times, 15 times with a highlighter, looking at every single line carefully, making sure that there's no errors, there's no there's no misspellings, there's no typos. All the alignment looks perfect, perfectly, uh, you know, mm. that type of stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's close that. And if you want me to take a look at, once you get it to one page, it's obviously gonna be hard for you because you haven't done that before. Um, but if you want to take a look after you've done that, just let me know. We can we can do it again next week. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, Greg. And also, I wanted to ask about the internship. How it's going to be? Like, do we, will we have classes every week? Every Friday or... we're going to be yeah. Every Friday we're going to meet for just this call, but it's more of a informal kind of career oriented call. Um, so it's not uh, it's not classes, but yeah, it's we're we're I'm here every week to help try to help you guys if you have questions on your career or your resume, or or the uh, internship itself. Okay, okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Okay, let's open up Greg's. Greg, are you there? Hey, what's up? Pleasure to meet you. Hey, likewise. Let me let me share my screen. Uh, okay, thanks for sending this through. So tell me about, okay, Pretoria, you graduated uh, 2020, a couple years ago? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then I did a year at the, at the at, of CFI courses while I was training for the World Championships. So I uh -huh. did that to keep me busy. Cool. Um, so yeah, and then now I'm working at consulting. I did a internship at Venture Capital, but then I also worked at one of their portfolio companies in Tel Aviv. And now I'm working at a consulting firm in Tel Aviv. What world championships? Uh, karate. Okay. Where is that? Um, it was hosted in Tokyo. But where is that? Wait, didn't tell me. I don't see that you're a karate person. Anywhere here. Oh, I should probably include that. I don't know. How How would you think? I mean, that's should I, like, that's are you good? Are you highly ranked? Yeah, yeah, if you're reasonably, yeah, yeah. Like what? Black belt, obviously. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm a third down black belt. Okay. Like, I don't know. Do you have an interest section? You have no interest section on your resume. Interest section. Uh... Like soccer, running, poker, snowboarding, skydiving, this, like showing you could be like okay, X degree black belt competed in the world championship. Da, 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 da. Like that makes you interesting, Greg. Okay. That makes people want to talk to you, ask about that. What is that like? How, do, how long did you train for that? Well, suddenly everyone yeah. wants to talk to there. Guess what? You just labeled yourself the karate guy. You just branded yourself. Yeah. And that's not bad because you're memorable. That's okay. going to get you so many more interviews. I'm telling you. Like people don't realize this. Like this stuff. Well, I guess you say it here. No? You say it up so here. So should I take out that overview section? Oh, yeah slash this get rid of it but you need a big section on you definitely need your karate like highlighted but in a much less wordy way so i'm gonna say exclude i'm gonna say exclude overview yeah overview gone for sure work experience for sure because you've been out for a thing financial okay uh working in financial modeling evaluation analytics including 409a estate planning and corporate structure working transfer pricing planning intern Testing operation. So it's like more audit type accounting type stuff, right? Created search templates. Yeah. Yeah. Searches for ease of use. So yeah. Um, this is good. Education, good. Yeah. You didn't put your GPA. Was your GPA low? Uh, for which which one? Uh, Pretoria. Uh, yeah, Pretoria was, was a shitty one because I was at the Olympic Training Center the whole time. So it was basically so like, just like. You need to put, yeah. So like, done. I think. I think it's important that you um, you don't use it as an excuse, but you you very clearly highlight the commitment and the number of hours you are spending at whatever the Olympic Training Center, blah blah blah, blah right? Um, such that. Uh, where what sec? Where would I include that? Yeah, so like I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, maybe under additional information, like see, this is all jammed together in one really horrible bundle. I much rather see something like this, Greg. At the bottom. Uh, let me try to zoom in here. So yeah, I'll zoom in. Can you zoom in slightly, please? Yeah, no problem. Let me view. Oh, if I can see it here, view. Zoom. Uh, let's do 200%. No, zoom down. So you see this here. Let me try to refresh. Um, Additional information. Okay, there we go. Yeah, where am I looking? On your right on the right. Education. You see, how, okay. you see how I have different lines formatted and such that education. these are on the left, and then there's things on the right because this is where I'm using a table here to format. Okay. See these light lines? You're not going to see that when you print the resume or send it in a PDF. Yeah. Um, but this helps keep everything really organized and aligned. So, um, so for example, like. It would be really cool if you had something like skills, whatever. Yeah, you have valuation analysis, da da da. You could have something, skills could be more like language skills or like other skills. But before that, you could have like a modeling thing where you have, uh, you know, get rid of Microsoft. You don't really, Microsoft obviously, you, you could have like SQL accounting or DCF valuation, have that first DCF valuation, advanced Excel, sensitivity analysis, debt equity financing. Um, okay. SEO is more not really so financy, so I'd have it as almost uh, under skills below. Um, if you're not gonna have like languages and stuff, so have modeling first, okay. then skills with like the kind of less financy stuff. So like Google Analytics, search engine, Google Ads, Python, data analysis, Power BI. Um, you don't need business intelligence if you're saying Power BI and all this stuff. I don't think. Um, and then. Get rid of Microsoft Office Suite, Word, PowerPoint. It's obvious if you, especially if you're saying Excel and all this stuff. Um, so what I would do is under what you should literally do is like have modeling skills, and you should literally have karate. Okay. As a separate section, and then you should say like, like where yours says skills, modeling, computer certification. Yours would be modeling skills, karate, and then literally here would be one full line or potentially even two lines where you say third degree. Black belt, um, competed in the Olympics, okay, okay. da 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 this year in Tokyo, placed this, da 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 three, you know, um, I'm even tempted to put it up in your experience section because it took so many hours, like number of hours per week of training. Yeah, it's all, it's, it's, it, it's under experience on LinkedIn. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's under. Yeah, because. Let me see here. Uh, if I can copy this. I'm so bad on LinkedIn. There we go. I'm opening it now. Yeah, I, th I think the links, I think I put the link on top if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's not working, but it's fine. I, I believe you, but um, it's for some reason, it's just taking me back to a generic feed. You should test that link, make sure it works. I should oh. test that link. Yeah, let, let me put it, I'll put it in the feed quickly. One second. Sure. Um, I'm looking for it. Okay, Karate South Africa, national athlete. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah. Yeah, that should be under your experience for sure. Okay, so take out the news outlet stuff I did in high school and um absolutely, yeah, kill that. Um where is that? The okay, doc? So, this stuff? Yeah. This stuff? Where is it? News outlet. Yeah, get rid of the news outlet. This is needs to be consolidated to three bullets, the doc innovation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, person. but that was me working at a doc at doc tech and the doc, but uh yeah, I see what you mean. I'll try to cut out a few. Yeah, do the one and you need to quantify more. B2B demand generation test started via marketing products. Doesn't say yeah. what you did, what the outcome was. Um, worked with leverage buyout models. Why? What was the value? You know, what happened? Operated. Shouldn't be its own bullet here. <laughs> like a typo uh, here. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So like, yeah. Uh, it's just, I literally, three bullets. I don't care which one you choose, but make sure they're bullets that are most quantifiable and most like impactful. Okay. okay? Get rid of this. Okay. Put your karate in there. And give me more specifics. That was a long time, man. You were doing karate for like your country. 20 years, yeah. No, but like in terms of like competing for them. Uh, yeah, time yeah. For so over like four years. At, um, for over four years. properly at like 14. And then I went to the Worlds at 18. And then, yeah, I'm actually still going. I'm training in Tel Aviv at the moment. Yeah, so um, my point is you need to get that on there. Um, because it's a big uh, part of what you do and who you are. Okay. And you shouldn't hide away from that. I mean, you've you've done it. I'm like you've you've reached the, kind of the top levels of the sport, right? Yeah, essentially. And so it it shows a lot of dedication, right? And, and hard work and good work ethic. So do you want to put that in there? Um, you need to clean up your formatting. I think get it into this template. And this is in the on the site. If you just go into resources, wallstreetdays.com slash um, under resources. I was going to ask, is there an editable version of that? Yeah, yeah there's a word. Yeah. There's a word version. I'll show it right here. So if you go here, wallstreetdays.com, you go into resources, you go to templates, um, investment making resume template right here or private equity, whatever, either one. You probably want to grab the private equity because your work experience is up the top. Okay. That has work experience at the top. You want to have deal experience, but it's a good, um, it's a good one to start from for people who have experience. Okay. So I take um, the PE. Yep. And you uh, can download the word and then it'll have these kind of grid lines for you to keep things organized. Make sure you always okay. PDF before you send it, but definitely check your link up top. Yes. There's typos all over here. There's like weird line here. There's, you know, you had this bullet here. Yeah. You know, you got to print it out and, and look it over carefully before you send this. Okay, no, definitely, definitely will do. Um, yeah. Otherwise, That's yeah, otherwise good. Really I mean, you're, like, you're, you're leaving out, you're leaving out kind of your most impressive stuff, which is a shame. Yeah, yeah, okay. And this stuff, I, I don't want to some more quantifiable, like, it feels like you're just trying to jam in a bunch of like financial modeling evaluation, which I love, by the way, I love the way that you're selling, but give me more about like the date, like what you actually did in the outcomes, like to quantify that rather than just like throwing financial modeling evaluation analytics. Like it feels like you're trying to get all the keywords in there for all like what recruiters might want, which is good and it's important, but try to give me a little bit more quantification of like what specifically you did for that firm. Okay. Got you. Um, and I think that'll help. I unfortunately have to go, but if you do want your resume read next time, please get it to me earlier. Um, Tola, oh, sorry. You. Tola, I see you had sent something through. Did we do it last week? Tola, I can already look at yours. Get rid of your career objective. Um, actually, your quantification looks good, um, but the format is is way too spaced out. It needs to be on one page. Same same recommendation to everybody else. Uh, thank you okay. so much. I should make you one page. You got to get it on one page. You got to get rid of your huge career objective up at the top. Okay.
and you aim to three, three to four bullets max, four bullets max on these. You don't even have WSO stuff in there and you're still way onto the second page. A lot of that's because of the, the trainings you have, each one line going like this. It should be in one line similar to the, the template you saw. Uh, thank you so much, Patrick. I was wondering if you could connect with me on LinkedIn. I could send you my LinkedIn through uh, Slack. Yeah, that's fine. You guys can all connect with me. Thank you so much. Yeah, please. I think that would be really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, just connect with me. Um, I'm happy to connect with you guys. So that's that's it. I mean, I think there, you'll notice like the pattern. There's the like some people have good form. One, What's that? Patrick? What's that? Where's the link to the principal? Um, the private mm -hmm. equity resume template. It's under resources. You hover under resources and templates. Uh, bottom right corner of the, if you, after you hover over resources, it should be in the bottom right corner. Add where on slack no no no. on wallstreetoasis.com oh uh, okay the wallstreetoasis website itself okay okay yeah there's a page there a private equity resume template and it goes through like the parts of the template stuff like that um and that's it but i gotta run um because i'm late for something already but uh Thanks everybody for joining. And next week, thank um, you so much. Thank I'm going to do more of these because I think uh, I think some were good. Like uh, I feel like some were good and had good. I think most of the most of the bullets were weak. There's a couple strong bullets in there for some of you, but um, a lot of you had two page resumes. A lot of you are doing uh, the formatting for a lot of you needs a lot of help. So definitely use those templates and leverage it. There's no reason not to use it. It's proven. So um, that's all for now. Thanks everybody for joining and talk next week. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye, everybody. Thank you. And thanks to you, my listeners at Wall Street Oasis. If you have any suggestions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to send them my way, patrick at wallstreetoasis.com. Until next time.